All right, well, now that we've cured your case of the Mondays with Kittens, who we'll get to in a second, it is time to kick off the week with a fiery round of Hot Topics. Joining me now and welcoming to the hot seat, former news anchors Travis Mayfield, Mayfield and Casey Aitchison. And the lady who's usually in my ear, New Day producer Rebecca Perry. It is so good to see you both and Rebecca as always. Thank you for having us. I am so excited. Casey, I don't think I've seen you in person since what, 2019, 2018? Oh my God, that sounds like a long time. It <laughs> was, it was at the, as a matter of fact, it's I ironic think. because you and I were at the SPCA, I think. Yes. That where I was holding kittens. So we only get to see each other if cats are involved? I mean, I guess that's the rule. So <laughs> okay. I, I'll, bring, I'll bring one. We'll have cats <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, why not? <laughs> all right. Well, our first topic today in Hot Topics is something you've all seen in the headlines, student loans. So President Biden is considering uh, wiping out a certain amount of student debt. And we don't know much and how much yet in the details, but he says he'll reach a decision by the end of the next month. So. How are we feeling about this? I actually, I don't really know enough about the details to give an educated comment on it, but I do know that all of us went to J school. Well, actually, I went to, I was an English literature major, but you know, you go to school and you get out and you know, if you're a journalist in, in Wyoming, you're making what? $20,000 a year? $14,000 oh, yeah, a year. Yeah. Yeah. More like 14, yeah. So you're never 15. paying off your student debt. Yeah. So maybe this will be great for journalists. What do y'all think? I, I am excited about the idea of getting some folks out of debt, but it does worry me because debt doesn't disappear. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has to transfer somewhere. Mm, so point. someone who is getting out of debt, someone else has to pay that debt. And usually it's the taxpayer, and that's me. That's me too. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it up to a point. Like if we yeah. could cap it at a certain level, we'll pay up to $25,000 of your debt. And then it feels like a little bit more fair versus like, I'm going to pay off your entire Harvard bill of $200,000. Right. Right. And your law school. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, Case. the first thing I thought of was, what's the problem we're trying to solve? So mm -hmm. when I first saw this in the news, I was like, yeah, forgive that debt. Like, because when you get into student loans at 18, 19, 20, it's really hard to conceptualize what that actually means over the course of the next you know, several decades mm -hmm. of your life. Yep. So if the thing we're trying to solve is there are people who are so in over their head with debt that they can't uh, contribute back to the economy and spend money and they are in over their heads with everything else, are there other programs that we should be funding to make that easier? So putting money in other places so that families can start to afford childcare and education. And then what else are we doing to make education affordable moving forward so that our kids and our kids' kids aren't finding themselves in the same situation? Uh, Casey for mayor. <laughs> Just saying. I'll be Free your campaign for everyone. <laughs> you have my vote. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be great if there were some sort of like income limit. So Amity, as you mentioned, um, people who come right out of school and are making a, you know the bare minimum are going to have a really hard time paying back their student loans, and they're going to have to stretch them over many years. But if you're out of school and you're making you know a pretty decent chunk of money, then maybe you should be paying back your student loans. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that it should be just a blanket policy. Okay. Um, but I really do hope that it, um, if this happens, that it helps a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it will. All right, we'll keep an eye on this. But meantime, over the weekend, this Seahawks general manager John Schneider raised a few eyebrows for the way he described the team's first round draft pick, Charles Cross. I'm just going to let you listen. I think you're going to love this guy. Very high character, uh, you know, two parent home. Uh, his parents are awesome. He's, you know, 700 some snaps last year. All right, so what do we think of this? <laughs> Two-parent home really kind of stuck out to me as I was listening to the, the press conference because it just seems like that's not really something that you can help. So, like, good for him for coming from a two-parent home, but right. I don't know that we should be saying, oh, he's got good character, two-parent home. I don't know. It, was, it just didn't sit very well with me. It is. It does catch your attention. I was just curious what caught your attention most about that. Um, Travis, how do you feel? I mean, we tell our kids this all the time. A family is about, like, what love is. You know, yes. like, our family is two dads, but there are two mom families. There are a mom and a dad family. There's a grandma and a grandpa family. Like, there's a, a mom family. There's a dad family. Like, if there's love in your home, there can be support and it can be a good family. Mm -hmm. So if the point that he's trying to make is it's a good family, 
just say he comes from a good family. There you right? are. Like, there you are. Right. And also, what if he didn't come from a good family? Does that make him any lesser? You know, like he got to this point yeah. because of how he can play football. You that know, was my, that was my reaction was like, how does that added information help us understand anything additional to the fact that he got to this point and is deserving of a spot on the squad? Like, I. Right. That was kind of my takeaway. Like, I don't think he meant anything malicious by it at all, obviously, but I think it's a good example of how we all pull up examples from our own experiences. Yeah. Yes. And so what we identify as what means a you know good upbringing mm -hmm. comes out in these instances, and we can we can do better. Than and that. how do other players feel? Like, does it feel like a slight? Maybe there are other players who have like a single parent or a grandparent or, or lost like what? a parent. Exactly. And like that feels a little bit like, oh, well, my boss thinks that like the best structure here is two parents. Yeah, like, okay. and then I feel a little bit less about. Well, I'm about to get you fired up about something else. Oh, yeah, We're going to talk about this is our last topic. We only have a little less than a minute left. But uh, an interesting happened to you a few days ago. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Yeah. So um, there it is. A tree in our backyard. A neighbor decided that it was growing into their backyard and they just cut it down or at least part of it. And you can see there's the big pieces. We're not talking about limbs, like really big like pieces trunks. of the tree and then left it in our yard. Is that even legal? Can you leave so like refuse essentially in someone else's yard? I, there's debate about this. Apparently some cities like it's the responsibility of the person who where the trunk is growing their responsibility, but just kindness seems. Yeah. But I will say I went around and I talked to this neighbor and they were lovely and I, I just took it on myself and I was like, I'm sorry that the limbs were growing in your yard. But it why didn't been... you tell me I have, you know, there's people who I have neighbor or people I know that go and they cut trees from other people's yards. Is it your kids? <laughs> yes. yeah, exactly. it, to me, it's just, it's sort of communication is probably the best thing here. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that it just sort of appeared like that it was kind of different. I mean, Casey and I would have been happy to come on over to your backyard <laughs> yeah. and pick that limb up and put it in their backyard. My four-year-old is really good at picking things out of yards oh. that should not be picked out of yards. So, you know, we can add this to her recipe. Well, I'm glad that all worked out, and I'm also glad that y'all are sticking around for more hot topics, including this whole coastal grandmother vibe. Have you heard about this? I uh, will explain that later.